Saturday afternoon after a meeting that we've had this weekend, it's good just to sigh for a moment and reflect upon the Lord's mercies and His grace. You know, sometimes um, we just feel so lifted up in this world, we just don't, just don't want to walk out the door anymore. We rejoiced in the sweet grace and mercy of God. We've been admonished. We've been encouraged. We've been chastened. We've had all of those things that the gospel is to be used for in this life. And we ought to rejoice in God's grace. So I'm thankful for God's blessings. And I appreciate Dr. John William Burkett for staying with us this afternoon. He uh, was supposed to have been on the road now, but he agreed to stay with us and preach for us this afternoon. So so he's going to be hurrying out, so he's probably going, going to get with his message, and, and, and so stay with him, okay, and, uh, and pray for him, because uh, he's a dear brother. And Brother John William is, uh, is another young brother that I have known just about all of his life, and, and, so, and I, I tell this every time he comes, but uh, I remember Brother John William when his head wouldn't hardly go above the top of that table standing up here laying and singing. So we appreciate him staying with us this evening. Um, I'll ask um, Brother David, Elder David Johnson, to come up and offer prayer for us. And then, like for us to sing hymn number 36, Hungry and Faint and Poor, and then get Brother John Wayne to come up and preach for us. Let's look to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, as we approach thy throne once again, we come with grateful hearts for all that's been said and done in this place during this meeting that we've had here with the Gulf Coast Fellowship. Lord, we're thankful for the preaching and for the singing that we've heard. Is, uh, it just blessed our hearts and it was a sample of what it's going to be like in heaven, singing mm -hmm. praises unto thy name. Yes. Thankful, Lord, for these messages that have touched our hearts and given us what we need uh, in this life as we a walk through this wicked world that we live in. We need to be uplifted by the Word of God. And Lord, we've done that today and yesterday and all of these messages. Just help us to uh, think on these things that we've heard and to uh, apply them in our lives as the uh, days go by. And Lord, as we read the Scriptures and have heard uh, these messages based on uh, various uh, portions of Thy Word, we ask that You would bless us every time we look to the Word of God, that we might remember this weekend and the blessings that have been ours based upon those scriptures. Mm -hmm. Father, just bless now as we uh, continue on in this afternoon service. Bless Brother John as he comes mm -hmm. forward and give him what you've laid on his heart. And Father, just uh, bless us and, and open our, our hearts and our minds and our understanding to be mm -hmm. able to take in what you have for us. Sure. Thank you for all of these things that we've experienced today and Throughout the weekend, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> We'd like to stand to sing. Hymn number 36, Hungry and Faint and Poor. We were fed wonderfully this weekend, but this is another time, and that's over. We should be a hungry and thirsty time. Oh, oh. Thank you. 
Mark at 11, brother. <clears throat> Seems the meeting has been uh, blessed this weekend. I see by the countenance of many of you that you look uplifted and refreshed, and uh, we're thankful for these times uh, uh, that we can come to the Lord's house and enjoy His mercy and His grace uh, and fellowship with one another and and praising the the Lord that we mutually serve and adore. Such a time. I want to say thank you to the song leaders. A lot of times, you know, they get overlooked. But I'm going to tell you from my experience of leading the singing that uh, it wears on you. It really does, and so we appreciate those for uh, keeping us in key and on tune and in step. So, if you have your scriptures uh, this afternoon, I'd invite you to turn with me uh, to start with to Psalm 38. Psalms 38. Trust the Lord will... Bless me as I try to bring this message. Uh, I learned a long time ago when I was first starting out in the ministry, a man can't preach. But the Lord can speak through a man, and it's wonderful when He does. Before we read here, Let's think for just a moment. It wasn't that long ago that farming was a little different than it is today. Today we have machines and automobiles and combines and tractors, things to do a lot of the heavy work. But not so long ago, and even for the last thousands of years, there was a little different way of doing things. And there was an animal in particular. You know, the ox. You go out in the morning, you hook up the plow. That was his job. But there was one animal that he seemed to have a a harder job than most. A little animal by statute. A little donkey. You know, a donkey was considered a beast of what? Burden. A beast of burden. They'd take that little donkey first thing in the morning and they'd load him down with sacks. And you can imagine as he's standing there and his knees would begin to buckle and now the hard task of carrying that burden down through the field, just this little animal, so feeble, yet he bore that burden, the weight on his back, looking for the sun to go down so he could get back to the barn and that burden could be lifted off. Maybe you felt that way. Maybe you felt like that little feeble donkey Maybe you felt the weight. Maybe you felt a burden. Caused your knees to buckle. Looking for a day when you can shed that burden. Or maybe just a little help to relieve that burden. This morning I want to, or this afternoon rather, I want to speak to you on the ministry of a burden bearer. David says, here in Psalm 38, I want you to listen to David. David knew a little something about burdens. David says, O Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. David knew that if that happened, there was no hope. He said, for thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. 
He says, for mine iniquity are gone over my head. As a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. They're too heavy. This burden that, that was on his back was a burden which David knew was too heavy. Maybe you felt that way where your soul, that's what David's talking about, how his soul is literally weighted down. He just feels like he can't put another, another foot in front of him as he's trudging on life's pathway because of this great weight that is on his soul. He says, my, my, my sin is too heavy. Too heavy. Is this my lot all the day long? Am I to do this all the day long? Is there no rest for the weary? Is there no way that I can be rid of this burden, this weight that burdens down my soul, that causes me agony and pain? You know what I'm talking about. You've had that weight. I've had that weight. I get that weight even now. But the answer comes, brothers and sisters, from a cry from Zion. Surely, He hath borne our grief. Surely, He hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem Him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. And in the end of verse 6, And the Lord hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. That's the cry of grace. That the burden bound has now been unbound. That the burden that was too heavy for me, that weighs my soul down, was not too heavy for Him. And so the, the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us has been taken. And placed in the hands of a fit man. Right. David says, as a burden too heavy for me, Christ says, I can bear that burden. Right. I can bear that burden. The Lord Jesus Christ was not weighted down with some burden of His own making. Not as the result of something He did amiss in His life, but rather, Jesus Christ literally took your burden. Your burden. Your grief. Your sorrow. The cause of it all. He took it all on Himself. Though He had done nothing, neither was God found in His mouth. Yet He opened not His mouth. He took all this and said nothing about it. He didn't complain. He didn't murmur. He didn't strain under the weight of the burden that was too heavy for you. He carried it willingly. And He trudged that, that hill. And he, and he went on to Calvary. And there He, he bore our burdens. The devil likes to let us think that our sin is still present. He wants you to think that burden is still there. That's why the gospel is necessary. It's to remind us that the burden is gone. Right. That Christ fulfilled the labor of our hands. That Christ took that which was too heavy. Right. 
he bore. His soul was weighted down so that mine could be lifted high. Jesus Christ is the perfect burden bearer. He came and He bore and He bore. He bore things that you and I could never endure. And He did it perfectly and willingly and lovingly. And He completed that burden. He took it as His own. We find in Matthew 27, verse 31, and after that they had mocked him, they took the robe from off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, Him they compelled to bear His cross. I want you to think with me for just a moment. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They all mention something. Something's missing twice in Scripture. I raise an eyebrow. Just mentioned three times. I'm digging all over. Amen. Why is this so important? That some man from Cyrene bore the cross for Jesus. That cross was a burden. Some man didn't even hardly know Jesus probably. He was from Cyrene. Comes out of nowhere. And then they compel to carry Jesus' cross. To be a partaker. The burden. Now was Simon, the Cyrene, instrumental in the salvation of mankind? No, because Jesus Christ was bearing a burden much heavier than that wooden cross. That's right. Maybe this is here to teach us something. Maybe this is here to teach us that Jesus Christ bore the heavy burden. He bore the burden that you and I couldn't bear. He was bowed down under the weight of sin and shame as He trod to Calvary. And Simon the Cyrene bowed under a wooden tree. Which was an emblem of suffering and shame. Maybe Jesus allows this to be recorded here to let us know that we have to bear this cross. And there's some burdens that we have to bear. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. There's some things we have to do. Right. Following the Master's example. Following the Master's example, we're reminded of Matthew chapter 11, where He says, Come on to Me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let me read it. Uh, But He says, uh, "Yeah, Come unto Me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Burden down. Heavy laden. Laden with all that grief of sin, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Watch. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The soldiers compelled Simon. Maybe Christ is compelling us.
Christ tells us to take up our cross daily and follow Him. Our burdens were removed. That heavy burden that bowed our knees that we couldn't bear, that was removed. Maybe so we could bear some burdens. Galatians 6. Galatians 6, verse 2. Listen to the words of the Apostle Paul. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Paul says to be bowed down under the weight of someone else's burden, and so fill up to the full the law of Christ. In other words, you want to look like Jesus? You want to minister like Jesus? You can't go burdenless. There's a burden. And the burden is sitting next to you. He says, bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. So if I want to look like Jesus, if I want to act like Jesus, then like Jesus on the way to Calvary, bearing the weight of our sins for us. We have to go after Him bearing the burdens of others. Because that's exactly what He did. And where did He take them? He took them before the Father. Where do we take them? Before the Father. We find in John chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus says, I'll read it. Verse 3. And he left Judea and departed into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. He must needs go through Samaria. Jesus had a need. A need. To go through Samaria. That was his need. Why did he have a need to go through Samaria? Because there was a woman there with a need. Because she was in need, Jesus had a need. This is important. I want you to get this. Because she had a need, he had a need. I'm talking about the ministry of intercession. Listen, because when you and I have a need, guess who has a need? Jesus Christ, who stands at the right hand of the throne of God, what? Making intercession for us. When we suffer a need, Jesus Christ treats it as if He's the one in need. He needs something. I need something, Father. Because my child needs it. So therefore, I need it. Grant it. And then we find in John chapter 11 where Jesus is standing at the tomb of Lazarus. And the shortest verse in all Scripture is recorded. Jesus wept. Why? Why? He was God. He was fellowshipping with Lazarus right then, not in a spiritual sense. He knew where he was. He could see Lazarus. He didn't miss Lazarus. But those around him couldn't. They were burdened down. They had a weight on their shoulders. 
And because they needed, they were in agony. He was in agony because of their pain. Surely He hath borne our griefs. You see where I'm going? When you hurt, Christ hurts. When you're in need, Christ is in need. He fills it as His own. Because you are so much a part of Him as His very flesh. And then we could get into Ephesians where He talks about husbands love your wives even as your own selves. What's He telling you there? Husbands... Love your wives to the extent that Christ loves the church, which is to the extent that when you suffer need, when the church suffers needs, He suffers a need. Right. Be so unified, so intertwined. You see that? Right. I speak concerning Christ and the church. So if Christ buried, buried, He bore that heavy burden which we couldn't bear and and then he gives us that example of, of Simon and, and basically tells us that there's a burden which we have been freed from so that we could bear other burdens. And that we are to follow his example and we follow his example by bearing other people's burdens. How do we do that? To the extent of Christ to try to follow that. It's hard to do. That's why it's not done very often. Because we like to approach situations in the hands-off way. Don't get too emotionally involved. Don't lower your walls so you can get hurt. Don't get so involved that it affects your life. But to be a burden bearer means that you have to be fully involved. In other words, when your sisters or brothers are hurting for whatever reason, Maybe it's the loss of a loved one or a rebellious child or a marriage that's fallen apart or financial problems or whatever. The list goes on and on and on of the burdens that burden us down and suppress our joy and make us feel like God doesn't hear our prayers and, and lift us up. When, you, when they're experiencing that, we have to we have to let it affect us so that we can take that weight and really pray. Because you know what you really pray about? Things that hurt. Things that hurt. When they affect you, when they stir your emotions, when they cause your soul to be weighted down, that's when you pray. That's when you pour your heart out to the Lord. And that's why it's so hard to do for other people. Because we don't let it affect us. We don't get fully involved. But Christ did. Christ allowed Himself to hurt on our behalf. To be a burden bearer means that their need becomes my need, their pain becomes my pain, their joy becomes my joy. That's what it means. That was the heart of the Apostle Paul. If you look all through his letters, it was all, he was there bearing their burdens. I'm there with, in sorrow and pain. To be that burden bearer, to be that mutual friend, means to have the attitude that we're in this together to the end. Because that's the attitude of Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ has so willingly opened Himself up to all our hurts, our sorrows, our pains, the grief of sin. And if that be the case, maybe we should become vulnerable. 
for the sake of our brethren. And when we take that, we come before the Lord and we cast all our cares upon Him. Why? Because He careth for us. That's intercession. That's burden bearing. That's the Gospel. And if we believe the Gospel, we believe that Christ has come and has borne our sins and our sorrows and has removed that heavy burden that we could by no means bear, then let us do it unto the least of these, His children. Thank you for your kind attention.